Hello, welcome to free school exam preparation. Today we're going to talk about Excel International AS and A levels, pure mathematics three. In this lecture, we'll continue with chapter two, trigonometry, and we will discuss the challenge questions for trigonometry, which are in the chapter three and chapter four of the textbook. Okay, let's take a look at the first question, which is on page forty-nine. So we have a unit circle here, and the center is O. P is a point on this circle. Angle theta is acute, and AB here is tangent to this circle and point P. So we want to show these equations. So let's take a look at this OB equals to sec theta. So OB is here. So probably we can consider about the triangle OPB. This is ninety degree. So we'll have OB over OP. So what does this equal to? So OP is one, right? So is this is just OB, and we can write this as one over OP over OB, and OP over OB is just cosine theta. So it's one over cosine theta, which is sec theta. Okay, so that's for the first question. For the second, OA equals to cosec theta. So now we look at the triangle OAP. So this is theta. So this angle will be ninety minus theta. Here's ninety degree. So this angle will be theta. So in triangle OAP, so we can find out sine theta, which equals to OP over OA. OP is one because it's unit circle, so it's one over OA. So we have OA equals to one over sine theta, which is cosec theta. Okay, next one. So AP equals to cotangent theta. So we still look at triangle OAP. So we have tangent theta equals to OP over AP. OP is one, so this is one over AP. So AP will be one over tangent theta, which is cotangent theta. Okay, so that's how we do this question. Question on page sixty-five. So first, we want to sketch y equals to sec x. So maybe we can draw y equals to cosine x first. So y equals to cosine x. The graph between zero and pi will be something like this. So we know this one is neg、uh, pi negative one, and here is one, and this one is pi over two. Okay, so sec x equals to one over cosine x. So cosine x can't be zero. So in this case, x equals to pi over two will be an asymptote for sec x. And when x is one, as、uh, I when x is zero, we know cosine x equals to one. So sec x is also one. So the graph for sec x will be like this. Right, and then it's approaching this asymptote, but just can't reach. And when x equals to pi, cosine x equals to negative one. So sec x will also be negative one. Okay, so these blue, uh, the, these black ones are for y equals to sec x. Okay, next one. So arc sec x is inverse of sec x, and we want to sketch y equals to arc sec x. Okay, so because they are inverse, so in this case we know sec x and arc sec x they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals to x. So let's just draw this symmetry line and the asymptote for arc、uh, for sec x first. So this is y equals to x. Let's assume this is a straight line. Okay, so first we can draw the symmetry line. Of x equals to pi over two with respect to y equals to x, so it will be this one, right? Which is y equals to pi over two. So this y equals to pi over two will be the asymptote for arc sec x. Okay, now let's take a look at the、uh, y equals to sec x. This is pi over two, so here will be one, right? So let's just draw. Y equals to sec x in、uh, black, so will be like this. Okay, so this one here will be pi, so it will be something like this one. 
Okay, now let's draw the symmetry line. So, as a symmetry graph. So this one will go to here. So this is 0, 1. So this one will be 1, 0. Okay, and then if symmetry, so it will be something like this. Right, but it can't reach this y equals to pi over 2 because that's a asymptote for arc set x. Okay, and for this one, so this point is pi. Oh, sorry, actually for um, this one should not be here. So this one will be this one, so which is pi negative 1. Okay, so this is a graph. For um, y equals to sec x, right? So this point will be reflected to negative one pi. So will be somewhere around here. Okay, so we just say it's negative one pi, and then when it's going down, so the graph will be something like this. And still can't reach this y equals to pi over two. So the So the blue curve, this one and this one together, is the uh, graph of y equals to arc sec x. OK, and we want to find out the range of arc sec x. So just by looking at the graph, the minimum value it can reach is 0. And then it can't reach pi over 2. And for this one, it is from pi over 2 to pi. Okay, so this will be the range of y equals to arc sec x. You can also find this one by thinking about the domain of sec x. Okay, next question. So this is on page 75 of the textbook. So we want to find out expression involving this side length x and y here and angles a and b for the area of t1. Okay, so how do we do this? Because we know area of T1 equals to uh, 1 over 2 times this x and times this length, right? Maybe we give a name here, h, and times sine a. So here we have x, we have a, but we don't want h. So we can use a and x to represent h. So we will have h over x equals to cosine a. So h will be x times cosine a. So this will be 1 over 2 x squared sine a and times cosine a. Okay, and area of t2. So we can do something similar. So we have 1 over 2 times y and times h and times uh, sine b. So in this case, we can put B into the uh, triangle above, right? So we, as we can put H in the triangle above. So we have H over Y equals to cosine B. So we have 1 over 2 Y squared sine B cosine B. Okay, so the area of the large triangle will be the sum of these two. So 1 over 2 X squared sine A cosine A and plus 1 over 2 y squared sine b cosine b. Okay, so that's for question A. And question B here. So we want to prove sine A plus B equals to sine A cosine B plus sine B cosine A. Okay, so sine A plus B. So we can think about this is within this big triangle. So when can we meet this sine A plus B? So probably when we calculate the area of the big triangle, right? So the area of the large triangle equals to 1 over 2 xy and times sine A plus B. Okay, and we know this one equals to this expression here. But the problem is we want sine A cosine B and sine B cosine A. But here we have sine A cosine A, sine B cosine B. So this does not match with the right-hand side. So what we can do here is for this edge, instead of using this formula, we're using this one. 
So we know area of T1 will be 1 over 2 times x times so h here we change to y. And then we have cosine b times sine a. And for T2, we can do the same thing. So this h will use this formula. So we have 1 over 2y and times x times cosine a and times sine b. So the sum of these two equals to 1 over 2xy sine a plus b. So this will be 1 over 2xy and sine a cosine b and plus sine b cosine a. Okay, so we can cancel out 1 over 2xy. So we'll have this equation here. So that's how we do this question. Question on page 93. So we want to show the equation holds here. So what can we do? So probably we will just open the bracket by using the addition formula. So this first one equals to cosine a cosine b and minus sine a sine b. Okay, and this one will be cosine a cosine b and plus sine a sine b. Okay, so this equals to negative 2 sine a sine b, which is the right-hand side. Okay, question b. So we want to show this thing holds. Actually, this is also a very important formula itself. So what can we do is we can find out two angles. Let's say a plus b. a plus b equals to p. And a minus b equals to q. So I have a equals to p plus q over 2 and b equals to p minus q over 2. So we look at the left-hand side of this equation. So this is just cosine a plus b minus cosine a minus b. And according to question a, so this one equals to negative 2 sine a sine b. And we know a is p plus q over 2 sine p plus q over 2. And b is p minus q over 2. Okay, so we are done. This is left hand side. Next one. So here we can find out, so we try to match, right? x equals to a, 7x equals to b. So let's write here, a equals to x, 7x equals to b. So we have negative 2 sine x times sine 7x equals to cosine um, a plus b, which is 8x and then minus cosine a minus b, which is negative 6x. So we have sine x, sine 7x, equals to negative 1 over 2, cosine 8x, and here is minus cosine 6x. And we can times 3. So that's it for this question. Question 2 on page 93. So we want to prove this thing holds. Okay, so we can do something very similar to the previous question, right? So here we have cosine P minus cosine Q. So what we did is we let A plus B equals to P, A minus B equals to Q. And here we have sine P plus sine Q. So probably we can let A plus B equals to P and A minus B equals to Q. Okay, so we have a equals to p plus q over 2, and b equals to p minus q over 2. So the left-hand side becomes sine a plus b, and plus sine a minus b. So this equals to sine a cosine b, and plus sine b cosine a, and plus sine a cosine b, and minus sine b cosine a. So these two canceled. So we have sine A cosine B, which is sine P plus Q over 2. And cosine B is cosine P minus Q over 2. And then these two are the same, so it's two times. So that's right-hand side. Okay, so let's take a look at question B. So here we have 2 times sine 11 pi over 24, cosine 5 pi over 24. Okay, so we can think about P plus Q over 2 equals to 11 pi over 24. And p minus q over 2 equals to 5 pi over 24. So we have p plus q equals to 11 pi over 12. 
and p minus q equals to 5 pi over 12. So p will be 8 pi over 12, which is 2 pi over 3. And q will be 6 pi, uh, is that 6 pi? So 11, uh, no, actually 3 pi over 12. So it will be pi over 4. So let's, let's just double check, sorry, um, 12, 8, 8 plus 3, yes. So 12, 8 minus, correct. Okay, so we can just use a formula above, right? So this thing just equals to sine P plus sine Q. So this is sine 2 pi over 3 and plus sine pi over 4. So two, sine 2 pi over 3 is sine pi over 3. So it will be square root of 3 over 2. And this one is square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so let's take a look at this question. Uh, it's on page 96. So we have cosine 2 theta plus cosine theta over sine 2 theta minus sine 4 theta. Actually, in the previous question, we've seen something sine p plus sine q, cosine p minus cosine q. And as I just mentioned, there is a group of formulae. So let's say if we have sine A plus sine B. So from previous question, we know this equals to 2 sine A plus B over 2 and times cosine A minus B over, uh, sorry, A plus B over 2, right? So this is the formula here, it's A minus B. Okay, let's take a look at question 1 on page 96. So here we have cosine 2 theta plus cosine 4 theta over sine 2 theta minus sine 4 theta. So as we just mentioned, there is a group of formulae. So they are about this sine A and plus sine B, right? Or we have this sine A minus sine B. And we can have cosine A plus cosine B and also cosine A minus cosine B. Okay, so probably we can try to uh, find out some of the formulae here. So this one we have proved, right? So this equals to 2 sine A plus B over 2 and times cosine A minus B over 2. Okay, and for this one we have proved, which is negative 2 sine a plus B over 2. And we have this sine A minus B over 2. Okay, maybe we can have another one. So tangent A plus tangent B. Okay, so we try to get the other three formula. So what we can do here is sine A minus sine B, right? Can be written as sine A plus sine negative B. This is because sine x is an odd function. So sine negative x equals to negative sine x. So now we can use the first formula. So it will be 2 sine. So a plus negative b. And cosine a minus negative b. Okay, so we've got the formula for the second one. So 2 sine a minus b over 2. And here is cosine a plus b over 2. And how about cosine A plus cosine B? So there are several ways to get the formula. So one thing we know is sine pi over 2 minus A equals to cosine A. And cosine pi over 2 minus A equals to sine A. Okay, so here we can write cosine A plus cosine B as sine pi over 2 minus A and plus sine pi over 2 minus b. So this one, we can directly use the first formula. So will be 2 sine. So inside here is pi over 2 minus a plus pi over 2 minus b. So it will become pi minus a and then plus b. Okay, and then we'll have cosine. So here is pi over 2 minus a and minus pi, let's just write this out, minus pi over 2 plus b over 2. Okay, so this equals to 2 sine pi over 2 minus a plus b over 2. And here we have cosine, so it's just b minus a over 2. So this one, we can use this formula again. So will be 2 times cosine a plus b over 2. 
So this, we can write this as maybe a minus b over 2. It doesn't matter because cosine x is an even function. So this just equal to 2 cosine a plus b over 2. And here is cosine a minus b over 2. How about this one, tangent a plus tangent b? So we can think about, let's just erase some of the thing here. So tangent a equals to sine a over cosine a. And tangent b equals to sine b over cosine b. So maybe we can try to get the common denominator and to see what we can do for the numerator. Okay, so let's say we have uh, tangent a plus tangent b equals to sine a over cosine a and plus sine b over cosine b. So the common denominator, cosine a times cosine b. On the top, we have sine a times cosine b and plus sine b uh, times cosine a. So this one will just be sine a plus b. And here we'll have cosine a times cosine b. Okay, so we've got all the formula here. Now let's do question A. So the left-hand side equals to, so cosine 2 theta plus cosine 4 theta. So we can use this formula. So it will be 2 times cosine 6 theta over 2, 3 theta. And then cosine, so negative 2 theta over 2, negative theta, which is also theta. Okay, and then for this one, we can use the formula here. So I have 2 times sine. So it's 2 theta minus 4 theta over 2. So it will be negative theta. And then we have cosine. And then 2 theta plus 4 theta over 2. So it will be 3 theta. Okay, so these two can be canceled. So we'll have cosine theta over... So sine negative theta will be negative sine theta. So this is negative 1 over tangent theta, which is negative cotangent theta. Okay, so that's for A, for B. So we have this thing, and we want to show this equals to the right-hand side. So what we can do is we can separate these two into two parts, right? So because we have already written many formulae, we don't want to waste them. So we will try to write out the sum of cosine sine. And then we have cosine 3x and plus cosine 5x. Okay, so here we can put them together and use the, this formula here. So 2 cosine, so 2x times cosine 3x minus x, 2x, so x. Okay, and here we'll have cosine 4x times cosine x, so still 2. So we can take out 2 times cosine x, and we have cosine 2x plus cosine 4x. Again, we use the same formula. 2 times cosine x, so here will be 2 times cosine, so 3x and cosine x. So we have 4 times cosine square x, cosine 3x. Okay, so those formula allows us to transfer this addition and difference to the product. And before, when we say cosine a plus b, right, sine a plus b. And also we have this tangent a plus b. So this allows us to open the bracket within this function. So if you see something like this, you need to take out a and b, then we use the addition and difference formula. But if you want to see like how we can combine the sum difference into product, then we use this type of formula. Okay, question two. So A, B, C are on a circle, center O, R equals to 1. So let's draw this circle. Okay, and then we have this A, C is a diameter. So here is O, and we have A, C. Um, and also what do we have? A, B, C, O, D, B equals to 90 degrees. Okay, actually, I just need to look at the book about the points. So this one. So we have ODB equals to 90 degree and AB here, BC here. Okay, so this is 90. 
and we have this angle equals to theta. So we want to use the graph to show these two identities. Sine 2 theta equals to 2 sine theta, cosine theta. Okay, let's do a quick review. So if we have a circle here, right? So we have this angle, we call it alpha. And the name of this angle is called uh, circum angle, right? Circum angle. And if we have the center O here, so we still link these two points. So this angle is called central angle. So it will be twice the size of this circum angle. Okay, so we can do the same trick here because we want to have two theta. And now we only have theta. So in this case, we can connect O and B. So this one is a central angle. So it's still using these two points, B and C. So this will be 2 theta. OK, so what will be sine 2 theta? Sine 2 theta. So we can look at this triangle OBD. So equals to BD over OB. And OB is 1 because it's a unit circle. So we'll have BD. OK, how about sine theta? So sine theta, cosine theta, we can look at, um, so if this is theta, so probably we can look at triangle ABD. Right, so sine theta, it may not work, it's just, uh, we just need to try. So sine theta equals to BD over AB. And cosine theta equals to AD over AB. So 2 times sine theta, cosine theta, equals to 2 times BD times AD and over AB squared. So we want to show this one equals to BD. So basically, we need to show 2 times AD equals to AB squared. OK, is there any way we can show this? So 2 times AD, square, uh, AD equals to AB square. So we can think about in this triangle, A, B, C, right? So this is also a right angle triangle. So probably we will not use this triangle ABD, but instead we'll use this big triangle ABC. So triangle ABC here. So we know sine theta equals to BC over AC. So AC is 2, so it's BC over 2. And cosine theta equals to AB over AC. So we'll have AB over 2. OK, now let's try 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So this will be 2 here. Top will be BC times AB. So we want to show this one equals to BD. OK, does this one work? So B, C, and A, B, and we have this B, D. It works. Why is that? So think about this big triangle, A, B, C, right? So we can calculate its area by using A, B as a base, B, C as a height. Because here, A, C is a di um, diameter, so A, B is perpendicular to B, C. So we have the area equals to 1 over 2 times B, C times A, B. And also, we can use AC as its base and BD as its height. So they are the same. Both of them represent um, the area of triangle ABC. So what do we have here? We know AC is 2. So BC times AB equals to 2 times BD. So that's exactly what we want to prove here. OK, so what you can do is you can write 2 sine theta cosine theta equals to BC times AB over 2, right? So this part we don't need. Okay, and then we know for the area, we have this equation. So 2 sine theta cosine theta equals to BC times AB over 2. So this will just be BD, which is sine 2 theta. Okay, so we've proved the first uh, identity. And how about the second one? So cosine 2 theta equals to 2 times cosine square theta minus 1. OK, so let's do this question. We want to show cosine 2 theta is equivalent to 2 cosine square theta minus 1. 
So because we have this two theta, so still we need to use this small triangle OBD. So we have cosine two theta equals to OD over OB. So it will just be OD because OB is one. Now let's take a look at cosine theta. So how do we get cosine theta? So we can use this big triangle ABC, right? So cosine theta equals to AB over AC. So AC we know is two, so it's AB over two. Now what we want to do is if we look at this AB, uh, let's just look at the right hand side, right? Two times cosine square theta minus one. So will be two times, so here cosine theta we change to AB over two. And then we times another cosine theta minus one. So this will be AB times cosine theta minus one. So what is AB times cosine theta? So in this case, we can look at this triangle ABD, right? So in triangle ABD here, AB times cosine theta will just be AD. So it will be AD minus one. So AD minus one, one, we can use AO because we have this OD for cosine two theta. So we try to move towards this OD. So we have AD minus AO. So AD minus AO is just OD, and this equals to the left-hand side cosine two theta. Okay, so we've done with this question. So the uh, tricky part of this second question is here, we have to plug in this AB over two into the cosine theta here. The problem is if you just use cosine theta equals to AB over two, and then you do a square. So you will end up with AB square over four, right? This is cosine square theta times two minus one. So we have AB square minus two, um, AB square over two minus one. So if you want to show this one equals to OD, so this will be quite hard. The reason is here OD is a linear term, but this AB is uh, square of a side. Usually, if you want to prove something like this, it may not work. Okay, so that's for question two. So that's every challenge question in chapter three and four of the textbook. So we hope you have enjoyed our lecture and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.